Hi, and welcome to The Bright Balloon, a podcast where I'm sharing bright ideas for your balloon business. My name is Sarah Meyer, and I'm a balloon business owner like you, and I love the creative side of what I do, but I really love the business side, which seems to be the part where most people struggle. So I'm here to help. Each week, I'm bringing you an episode full of bite-sized tips you can use to make tiny improvements to your business. I want you to make more money, eliminate stress, and learn along with me as we grow our creative businesses together. Welcome to The Bright Balloon. Hello and welcome to another episode. Today I have one of my best friends on the show, Lily from the Creative Heart Studio, is talking about product development and the many versions of her amazing artist apparel and charm loons, a new product to hit the balloon scene. We are just talking about all of the behind the scenes stuff. I don't know how she does it. I don't have the patience. I could never see a product through to fruition. So it's all new to me. I love chatting with her. We have several other episodes together. Um, So it's always a joy to have Lily back on the show. Um, Before we jump into the interview, I just wanted to say a quick thank you to everyone who applied to attend the Big Balloon Build in Lake Geneva. Last week, we launched on the same day that the episode went live, and it filled up in about two hours. So I know that many of you applied and were disappointed that you did not have a spot, but just remember these events are so great because they are small, which means they are limited in the number of people that can attend. But don't worry, there are many, many more big balloon builds coming up, some of them a lot sooner than you might be thinking. So stay tuned for more information. The other thing that I wanted to mention is that this is the first time we attempted to video record a podcast. I knew that Lily would be a great guinea pig. So if you want to see the video, you can head over to YouTube and it's actually a good one to check out because she shows some of her products. And if you're just listening to the recording, the audio recording, you'll be able to kind of hear us referencing some of those so you can check it out. This is my first time ever trying to do this or edit video. So, um, bear with me as I figure this out, but the goal is to bring more video recordings um, to the podcast. Before we get into the interview, let's take a quick break and hear from one of our sponsors, and then we will get right into it with Lily from the Creative Heart Studio. I hear you. I hear you. You've been providing decor to parties and weddings, and you're trying to break into those higher value business and corporate event planner clients. I know it's a struggle, Did you know that most corporate planners find their balloon decor company by using Google? I'm Jeff at Asset Lab, and if you want to grow your business client list, send me a text or give me a call at 206-488-1871. Welcome back. Your third time, Lily, is back on the show. I think you're the only person, well, maybe Joe from having a party, but I think you're the only person that's been on three times because you're just that good. So welcome back. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Thanks. I'm so happy to be here again. And we're we're also attempting to do video for the first time ever. So if this is terrible, you'll never see it. And I know Lily will forgive me if I screw it up. So (laughs) here we go. I'm happy to be the guinea pig. That'll be fun. Well, we are talking today about some of your newest products. You've become this product queen. Um, The new aprons launched at the time of recording like last week. And mine is is at home, at home in my mailbox. I haven't been able to see it yet. So I'm excited to put that on later today. And also Charm Loons was a big launch that has happened since the last time we spoke. Yep. So I thought it would be fun to talk about how in the world you did this because like that's a, like to think of an idea and turn it into a product and mass produce it and then sell it to people is it seems impossible i'm sure at times it felt impossible but like that's impossible yeah it's hard it's really hard it's really hard and then it's also like one of those things that once you kind of just like everything, right? Like once you get the hang of it, you're just kind of like, Oh, okay. I get it. And then you kind of like set up like this system where you kind of figure out things. I mean, we're still at the beginning stages, like the stuff that I've launched. I know sometimes on the outside, it seems like it's so much. And I always feel like it's not enough, but, um, we're still getting the hang of things like really getting the hang of things. But every time we launch something, whether it's small or big, um, 
I learn more and more about the community, which is, I think, the most important part of this whole thing um, that allows me to, you know, develop product. So that I think is the most, like what I take away the most and it helps with like the next product we develop. Yeah, yeah. And in case people are listening and live under a rock, Lily is behind the Creative Heart Studio and has launched an artist, what do you call it? A line of artists? We We call it the balloon. We call it the Balloon Artist Collection. Okay, Balloon Artist Collection. So shirts, aprons, you just came out with like the scissors, retractor, carabiner. You have so many things. And then also charm loons, which are like the cutest little add-ons to a jumbo balloon, like a little tail that can be totally customized. So you have to click back in in the show notes to check these things out on your website. Um, the other question that I know I'm going to get because we're doing video is where did you get the jars behind you, Lily? So Great. go back. I will I will link to that episode too if you want to see how Lily organizes her balloons. It's the way I organize them now. Everybody uses these clear jars and we will link to that episode with Lily about organization as well. So all these things I have to think about now that people can see us. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Which is actually a really good um, start to talking about product development because when I posted this, um, this my workroom reveal or whatever, I got so much engagement, so many questions, like so many things about just like where to find things. And I thought, well, what do you like? What do you mean? And then people were like, well, do you have something like this? Do you have something like this? So that's kind of where like the whole thing started, where I was like, okay. I had created obviously balloon mosaics and then we were a completely digital based business, completely digital. Everything was digital. We didn't have any products or anything like that. I was just creating content and selling a digital product. But then I started like, because I don't do installations full time, like most balloon artists, I started and I, I, but I go to the conventions and I have a lot of interaction online. I would look at like, I would literally stalk you guys, like all the balloon artists, like all the balloon artists that go out. And I would look at the reels. I mean, not the reels, the stories of what people were doing when they were setting up. And I would notice that there were like, just like random duffel bags on the floor and like random like toolboxes or like, like, um, like a random backpack or something. And I'm like, wouldn't it be cool if there was like a nice clean bag? That's where it all started. A nice clean bag that would be nice and organized. Obviously we all know I'm super like, like type A. So I love everything to be organized. And I had a laundry basket that I loved because I used to use it like to take stuff back and forth to the beach and, and stuff like that. And I thought this is a great bag. However, I didn't feel like it was strong enough. And it wasn't that cute. Like you were limited to so, so many designs. So I told my husband, which it's funny because yesterday he was telling me, do you remember when you told me I want to do a bag for balloon artists? And I'm like, what? And I was like, yeah. Well, Anthony, Anthony works in your company full time, right? Anthony is, yeah, he's my business partner and he actually is an architect turned graphic designer. So having him on board did make this process so much easier because I literally can just draw what I need. And we both speak the same language since we met in high school, which was a design high school. So we speak the same language. Like I can draw something and I can be like, this is what I want. I mock it up. And then he's like, got it. And he understands it perfectly. So that <laughs> I, can't, is the- I can't even tell you how different that is from my husband. We're renovating this house and I'll like draw a picture and he'll just be like, I don't get it. And then I'm like, what don't you get? <laughs> I no, so I, I definitely have a huge advantage with that because he totally understands all of this. Like, I don't know how to work illustrator. I know Photoshop, but I mean, that's limiting. So I'm, I'm just like, well, I just like want this. Can you just like, just make it happen? And then like, yeah, he yeah. understands that he gets a vector. He's the one that does all the digitals anyway. So he vectorizes all my drawings, all my ideas. And then I'll be like, okay. And then I love that. Cause then I'm just like, well, I don't really like this tone. Cause I'm very particular about color. So I'm like, well, I don't want this tone. And then I'll play with like our Pantone book, which I love. And then he kind of puts that in and then he handles, um, all the communication with manufacturers and factories, which is great for me too, because then it allows me to still be creative. But like, okay, this is getting ahead of things, but just like that sentence, he handles everything with the manufacturers and the, like, well, how do you, where do you find a manufacturer? Like, what did you, what got you from idea to actually like production? Obviously it was a long process, but like at any point where you just like, I'm scared or like, I don't know how much this is going to cost or like, you just no, did it anyway. I wish I could like 
I should have I should have done like just because I feel weird doing that. But you know how some people record themselves when they're going through the you process. Totally should. And they record themselves crying. If I recorded myself crying, I could make a movie just for the times that I cried. <laughs> that was I'm always crying, and, and you know because you're frustrated. Also, you know when you're producing um, product, the cash flow is really important because you're you don't know if you're gonna make that money back. Like it's yeah. not like a digital product where it's kind of like, well, I did the investment of like creating the project, but that investment itself is not that large, and then right. it's kind of like that's evergreen on the website, and it's just always gonna be there. But product, you don't exactly know what the, your consumer is going to purchase. You can kind of gauge it versus off, based off like research. Um, but I didn't know 100%. So we went pretty safe. Like um, mm -hmm. when we first launched um, the bag and the aprons, the first apron, the first version of the apron, we went very simple. We were just like a black bag with the balloon artist, um, the balloon drawings on it, the matching apron and then we said obviously because we all know i love pink we said okay let's do a pink version because i know there's a lot of people who want pink also so mm -hmm. we went very safe with that and that worked it worked really well however the black one that sold is, what like like what's the minimum that you have to do when you like is it a thousand is it ten thousand like i have no idea or is so it different it's depending? different with every manufacturer like it's different with with a different um with the different factories, but this factory, because we were doing all the pieces in one shot, we were able to do a thousand pieces. So we, I know. So we did it's a thousand. Still a ton. It's still a ton. Yeah. So we did a thousand pieces, but it was able to like, um, kind of divide it up against amongst everything. So it worked. And also when you have something that's like a print, a custom print, and they have to manufacture this custom print, the minimums are a lot higher. Yeah. So that's why we kind of kept all the print together, like the, the print the same amongst all of them. Now with this new version, we were able to kind of divide it. We kind of did solid, we did solids and it was a little bit, it was a little bit better. And we already had an established relationship. So that really did make a difference. Right, right. Because it worked with um, us a little bit more. And what, so then what was kind of the, you said you were watching these Instagram videos and seeing yeah. people like me carrying around. You know what I used as my bag? I used a diaper bag. <laughs> Well, that because makes sense. All the compartments. Yes. Because it makes it sense. All the compartments. And exactly. because like it was a, it was a backpack, but it unzipped all the way, you know, like to be yep. like a little changing pad. Yep. So I had this, I'd show up with a diaper bag. What an idiot. So when you made the stuff, <laughs> I was like, yes, I need one. So um, I started with that laundry basket and then I thought, well, this is what I use when I do installations, when I've done like installations. What I hated was that it would kind of collapse on itself if there wasn't something inside of it. And mm -hmm. then it was just a bag. It was just a big open bag. So things would just get lost in the middle of it. Just like, of course, if you have a duffel bag, whatever it is. And of course, I would try to organize it. And I'd had like little Ziploc bags and this. But it was just like a mess. And I hated it. Yeah. So I'm like, this is like awful. So I told Anthony, I was like, so what if we did a balloon artist bag? And he's like, you think people are going to buy that? And I'm like, I would buy them. I would buy like 20 of them. But you can't gauge it based off of what you would buy, right? We're all different. Right. So I did, um, I did pick like a few balloon artists who I kind of like used as my like gauge. So I would pick somebody, I picked you, obviously you're like my number one, like I was like my singular focus group, <laughs> but I, <laughs> you weren't, you weren't the kind of balloon artist like me who was all about like the cutesy stuff. And I wanted this. I know you're all about function, practicality and making things, um, efficient. So I knew that you would give me the functionality. And I remember asking you questions like, oh, what do you take when you install? What do you this? And then we kind of had that conversation. Then I reached out to a few other balloon artists and I asked them what they used. And people were telling me like a duffel bag, a backpack. Um, somebody said they had like a rolling cart that was like for tools from like Home Depot or something like that. Yeah. So I kind of took all of that together and I'm like, okay, what people are missing here, I think it's like the compartments and being able to keep everything organized. So I said, okay, let's go based off of this laundry bag. And then I started redesigning the entire thing with my own like specs and then the metal pieces that I wanted to make sure were there to hold it up and like all the pockets on the outside. I wanted to make sure that it also wasn't like something that you couldn't carry because I knew it would cost wow. more to have something that would roll. So we were like, okay, let's start like that. And then 
seeing people set up, one of the things that I, I always get really frustrated with is I would just throw my, my fishing line on the floor and then it would get tangled on a chair, on a mm -hmm. leg, like somewhere. So I'm like, this is so annoying. And then I started seeing every, I was like, oh, people have like, they put them like in, in like a box or they put it in their bag or they put it in their apron or like whatever. But I'm like, it, has, it comes out. And then you're the one that told me, oh my gosh, it would be so great if there was like a hole where I could just keep my fishing line and it didn't go all over the place. And I'm like, oh, that's so genius. So I showed, I showed someone that at Balloon Wonderland and they were like, I yeah. thought that's where you were just supposed to like tie something to. Like, I thought it was just a rivet for no reason, but yeah. you know what? I can't take credit for that. I saw Chris Adamo do something. He had a little fanny pack or something. And I saw him do that at float like five years ago, but like, those are the things that I take away from conventions. It's never like this huge new thing I'm going to offer. It's like, right. ah, that is my tip. Like take the, my little fishing line tip is the one thing I took away that year. So I would also see like different stories of people like, this is how I do this. This is how I pack this. Mm -hmm. And I'd be like, okay, okay, okay. And then, so I kind of started going. So I said, okay, I provide already something that helps balloon artists, right? Which are the templates. How can I grow on that? And then I knew it would be a product. And I love, and it's, I, I've fallen, I have fallen in love with product design. So I was like, okay, so let's kind of start with that. So we started with that. And then Anthony started reaching out to like manufacturers in China. We tried stateside first, but unfortunately it's just like triple. It's like so much mm -hmm. more. Like it, it's, it's, it was, it wouldn't have been a cost effective bag. So Okay. We found a manufacturer, we looked at their reviews, the ratings, all that stuff, and then we just started the conversation back and forth on um, what we wanted, the specifications, all of that. And then we got, he obviously did his magic with all his like mock-ups and the perfect the positioning and all the measure, like it was, it was amazing. And then they manufactured uh, samples for us. And then we receive them. So that's the other thing too. It's like such a long process, right? Um, we receive the samples. And once we receive the samples, we made some changes off of the sample. And then they revised it. But then we didn't want to wait to get another sample. So we were just like, sure. send us a picture, send us a video, and we're fine. Because we wanted to get it out for Black Friday. Yeah. So we're like, oh man, and we're like, I don't know if that's going to work, whatever. By the time they started producing... Do you remember, that was when that whole issue started happening with the supply chain that like yeah, the, yeah. remember that the cargos were like held and we were like, Oh crap. They were supposed to be here within 30 days and they didn't get here till they were supposed to arrive the first week of November of that year. We didn't get them till we came back from float. They got, which yeah. was in January of the following year. I remember that because you wanted to bring them to float and then they were like sitting on your doorstep the day you got home from float. But float, let's talk about float because that was kind of your first like, yes, in person reveal. Right. And was it what was it what you expected or was it better? It like, was, how were they received? It was great. Um, We also had apparel at float. So yeah, I would, yeah. I've always been really hesitant to do apparel just because apparel is so unique to everybody and everybody's very different. Right. Um. Like my style is very simple, but it has color in it. So mm -hmm. it was really hard to, as a brand, obviously, I wanted to make sure I stayed true to myself, but that I also would make the consumer happy, right? And give with the consumer what they wanted. But I wanted to stay true to myself because I knew if I did like an all around print of like all balloon stuff, that wasn't going to work for me because that's not me. That's not my style. Right. right? You, want, you wouldn't wear that. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't wear that. Like, I love it. Like my, my friends that the Corazones Globo that launched their line, it's super colorful. It's beautiful, but it's totally representative of who they are. Mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure this was representative of who I am. And even yeah. though my feed is like really pretty and it's all colorful and it's, it's very like, you know, really aesthetically pleasing. I basically wear black and gray. Yeah. And then like my vans, because I always wear vans, my vans and my headbands are like my only color. So I knew I had to like stay within that um, style. So we were like, okay, let's just start with some designs. We kind of, I remember I kept telling Anthony, I want to be the Kanye. I want to be the Kanye of the balloon world. <laughs> I wanted everything very simple. I wanted everything very simple. So we kind of started with that. We went off some designs using the same print that we had on the on the bags and we kind of did some stuff with that like just like a standard little embroidered balloon dog and embroidered balloon and it did really well but 
I went a little bit crazy and I got pink shirts and those didn't sell as well. Okay. And I was like, well, I wouldn't wear a pink t-shirt and I love pink, but I wouldn't yeah. even wear a pink t-shirt because that's just not what I wear. I like to wear black. So then is I started noticing. Else, is there anything else that you thought was totally going to sell that didn't or something that you didn't think people would be obsessed with, but they were like, was there anything that was a different Yes. So the little thought. notepads, do you remember the notepads, the long ones? Yeah. You, okay. Yeah. I thought those were going to sell like crazy. I thought those yeah. were going to sell because I write notes everywhere. I'm, I literally mm -hmm. leave, I always have notes and I specifically designed them with a graph paper print on it because I love graph paper because it helps me draw to scale in a much faster way without mm -hmm. having to sit there and measure. I decide what my measurement is on each square and then I can just draw it. It makes it so much faster for me. So I thought, oh my gosh, balloon artists are going to love this from like to plan a quick sketch. Nope. Didn't sell. It, no. Like we still have a few and we didn't order that many. So I'm glad we did it, but I totally thought that was going to sell like crazy. And recently in this launch, we were afraid of the scissor. I was afraid the scissor reel, like the retractable scissor reel wasn't going to sell as well. And so was somebody, my husband, he was like, I don't know why do you want to why do you want to order so many and I'm like I really think people might use this um I'm like but let's try with we didn't get that many and we're like let's just try with a few so we ended up I think we ended up buying a hundred they sold out the first day like by two o'clock in the afternoon they were gone we were like what I was like look at this this sold so much faster than we even thought and on top of that oh I, I keep thinking we're like on a live <laughs> on top of that um we didn't I didn't think people were going to want to customize them but they did and they are are because you I customizing love, them we customize them we that's another thing which has to do with charm loons is we um actually we manufacture charm loons ourselves we make it ourselves so we we invested and got um the machine so that we could do it ourselves so now we can use the same machine and we can do the the engraving and all that stuff for That's the okay. for the reel. Let's take a quick break and then we will um, hear from a sponsor and then let's talk about the new line and charm loons because I'm but, interested to hear like what you changed the the new details because I know you yeah, had a lot of changes. The aprons so, had a lot of changes. Yeah. Okay, let's take a quick break and then we will be right back and talk about all the new goodies. If you've listened to any episodes of this podcast, you know that I think the most important part of running a balloon business is the customer experience. I like making it easy for my customers to purchase from me and pay me. I like making the process clear and I like being really approachable and easy to talk to, which is why as a customer, I love receiving that same treatment when I shop for balloons. I love having a party wholesale because they take care of me as their client. They always have recommendations. They treat me with respect they know the industry and they make it easy for me to shop and pay. So if you are in need of a balloon distributor or just want to check them out, click the link in the show notes and let them know that the bright balloon sent you. All right, welcome back. And we are going to chat about all of the new stuff. So again, you just relaunched the aprons two weeks ago. How'd it go? Good launch? Amazing. <laughs> we are incredibly grateful. Well, I know some of the details that you changed, but let's talk about that. Like, I think that would be hard to launch a product that you know you're probably going to change. Like, you know, you want that feedback, but also I'm so sensitive. I would be like, so my, I would cry if people gave me criticism, but you, I'm sure you, you got some, not even criticism, just feedback because you, you changed some things. So how did that, how did that come about? You know what's interesting? I mean, you and I, we talk so much, right? But, and we both know we're both very sensitive and I'm a very sensitive person. So when it comes to my balloon work, my artwork and things of that sort, I'm a little bit more sensitive hmm. um, because I think I pour so much more of my heart into that. You know, it's a, that's just an aesthetic or something that you love, right? Like it's just your style. But with the digital templates, I kind of feel like I got used to feedback. And, you know, every time somebody would be like, when I would see that people were asking me the same question, I'm like, okay, no, nope. we need to add that into the templates because that's an issue. And we would do an up, we would do an update. Every time somebody would ask wow. for another size, we we're like, okay, we got to do an update. So that kind of helped me with the fact, with the product manufacturing, because I don't take it personal. And at the end of the day, I want to sell my product. I want to sell my product. I want it to do well. And I want people to love the product. So I, I want the feedback. Actually, I spoke about this on my live the day of the launch that, 
I actually feel like I don't get as much feedback as I would like. Like I would love mm. more feedback when I post like those question boxes. I don't really get like a ton of responses and I wish I would because I really, really have fallen in love with like the product um, development for the balloon artist industry. I feel like it's an, it's a small niche, but it's, we need it. We need these things. I think they haven't been thought of before. Yes, there's been aprons. Yes, there's been different clothing lines. Of course, there's all that stuff. But I feel um, I've really honed in on on the specific needs of just this market, and I really, really love the feedback. So I don't, I, I don't, um, I don't get offended if people are, tell me like you know like I, I don't get my feelings hurt for that for some reason I don't I get my feelings hurt for everything else but not for that <laughs> <laughs> so what yeah. did what did change I know okay and also I'm a terrible friend but did you relaunch the bags yet or no no because the bags oh, okay. I was having a hard time with the feedback on the bags so I have a sample of the bag so when we went when I went to Wonderland I don't I don't remember if you saw it remember the pink and white checkered one mm-hmm I had the pink and white checkered bag, and then I took it to Balloon University too, but I didn't really use it because it was a different, like, you know, it was like a different format. But at Balloon, Universe, uh, Balloon Wonderland, I used it a lot because I wanted to see what it was going to be like, like if it was going to be beneficial because we have right. thicker metals on the inside mm. and the bottom is harder. So one of the things a lot of people, when we launched the first bag that I did get the feedback from was, I wish I could be, put a heavier inflator in it. I mean, oh. yeah, I mean, and I'm kind of torn with that because it's kind of like, it's a bag. It's not like a truck. <laughs> it's a bag. <laughs> yeah. so like, I know like, like one, a couple of my friends, like they just like stuff the bag with so much stuff. I'm like, you guys know it's a bag, right? It's like, it's like not a truck. Like eventually if you put the air force in there, I mean, you might break it. Like, I don't know, yeah. you know, but I did want to, you know, um, um, I'm sorry, I couldn't think of the word. I did want to accommodate and I did want to, you know, listen to that feedback. And so I, I know a lot of people wanted a harder, like a little bit of a thicker bottom. So it felt sturdier, mm. which I think is so important. Of course, I didn't think of it the first time, but you know, that's just how it, that, this, that's just how this works. Right, and right. then the metals, I definitely wanted them to be thicker because I remember trying to shove through a door and I, my, one of my metals snapped and I was like, oh Ooh. man, because I was just trying I was just, I shouldn't have done what I was doing, yeah. but then I thought, okay, if I do a thicker metal, maybe this will avoid it a little bit. Like it'll help, you know? So the, I had a hard time getting that feedback and figuring out what I really wanted to do. And the thing I've struggled with the most for the new bag is what design to come out with. That's what mm. I've struggled with the most. So that's the, because I know that that's going to be a bag that's going to be on the floor all the time people are going to throw it on the floor it's going to get more wear and tear than the aprons right yeah so, so dirt and stuff yeah so I was, and but but i've had so many requests for a pink bag so yeah. i'm like i don't know what to do yet i'm just kind of like what do i do i mean by the time this comes out we'll have ordered the new the new bags but okay i don't know um as of today, we have to make a decision by like Sunday, um, what I'm finally doing with the design of the bags and we'll figure out what that's going to come out, but that's the bags, but the aprons, the new aprons have a few different features and I'm just going to grab one really quick. So I don't forget what the features are like the changes. So, um, one of the things that I did for the apron that didn't change was the strap, right? So the strap is a long strap. It goes up to like 65 inches because I'm not a small, tiny girl, and I always have a hard time finding aprons that are comfortable for me and that will stay on, and um, I wanted to make sure that this was adaptable to, like, everybody. So mm -hmm. it does adjust, which is great. So you can have a tiny waist, and it will adjust. I mean, if you're, like, I don't know, like an 18-inch waist, maybe not, but, like, you know what I mean? Like, it's 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 it goes small, but it also goes really large, which I love, too. Um, and then what we did was for the people who are smaller and you have like that extra belt strap, we added the loops on the aprons in the front so that you can tuck it in. And that way okay. it's not hanging, even though you could probably cut it and just like burn it a little bit with a lighter so it doesn't fray. Um, that's that. And then we added the zipper that you recommended. Um, we added a zipper in the front, in the middle pocket, in the back to kind of keep like your phone, cash, like that stuff safe. Can you hold it up so I can yeah. see it? And then if people, if you're listening, this episode will be on YouTube so you can see. Oh, okay. So now I'm looking at it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, that's perfect. 
yeah so it has this zipper then you that has a zipper so you can keep it um keep your stuff safe and then we mm -hmm. added the little grommets on the sides of the apron because i spoke to um what a balloon maker that she was like you know what i do <clears throat> she was like i put a carabiner onto the she was putting it onto this piece she was putting it onto the belt strap and she hangs her bags there with like those little filler balloons for the garlands so when she's on a ladder she's just grabbing that so yeah. she was like oh if you had like a loop where i could put a carabiner it would be great because it won't it won't i don't have to worry about the back coming undone from the belt strap mm -hmm. so i'm like oh man that's so perfect so we we did the the two grommets on either side because i'm left-handed so i wanted to make sure i had it on both sides See, I wouldn't have thought about that. I would have done it on one side. That's so Yeah, smart. no, I, that's why we did it on both because I'm left-handed, so I do everything opposite. Mm -hmm. So I, I wanted to make sure that my left-handed and my right-handed people could both feel comfortable. And then we got the carabiners, of course, in a heart shape so that you could attach it and then you can attach whatever you need to it. Then I remember talking to you and my friend Yandira and she was like, oh my gosh, those scissor things would be so helpful. But the ones I always use, they suck. And you told me the same thing that because they're not scissor, they're not retractable scissor reels well, they're badge reels. Exactly. They only extend like a foot. So when you're on a ladder trying to cut something with scissors, like it, it literally prevents you from doing what right. You're supposed so, and to. it's not intended for that. It's intended just to kind of come out like 12 inches to a door and that's it. Because right. it's not intended for that. So when you spoke to me about that, I was like, oh, man, like, what if we got that made? And then somebody pushed back. And I was like, I really think we need it. I'm like, I really think we need it. And he was like, okay, let's do it. He's like, let's just order some and let's see what happens. And I'm like, okay. So when I spoke to the manufacturer, we had the, the cord extended to 36 inches. Because we figured if somebody was six feet tall, half of it was 36 inches so that mm -hmm. that extended the full length of your arm and mm -hmm. we i remember you telling me and i tried it too after you told me i tried to like snap the the reel the badge reel and i remember it snapped and it hit my finger and you had told me it did oh it to God, you too and it hits your knuckles yeah. yeah so what we did was i was like well what if we had an attachment that had a carabiner on it and then you can attach it to the grommet of the apron i have mine hold on i'm gonna grab mine Oh, wait. I swear I had it. I just saw it in my purse. <laughs> Maybe I took it out and put it by my balloon stuff, but all my stuff ended up in weird places after <laughs> Balloon Wonderland. I still am finding things. Well, you know that I lost mine for Balloon Wonderland right before we left, and I was so upset. And then when I came home and I was cleaning stuff out, I found it. I was so upset because I couldn't. Yeah. Look how cute. And mine is. It's can you so see cute. that? And mine, mine has my name. Was mine a prototype? Yours was, yours was the first one we ever did. Woo it's like a collector's item. So then Love we it. did, we did the, the key ring at the bottom. Cause I know that this plastic thing, the little plastic loop isn't necessarily always strong enough. So we were like, let's do a key ring because that will hold the scissor. Yeah. It's not going to go anywhere. And like, what is this? Cause it's not string, is it? So that one is different actually. Oh, okay. Well, what are they now? So there's this one is like a regular black cord. That's the one we're gonna we're gonna do now. The one you have is the one we're doing now. We're gonna there we're you. gonna bring those in now because that one has a metal cording because um this cording with the this is like a regular cord. It's you can accidentally cut it if you're not careful. Oh, okay. I did that at Balloon so University. You, so are you doing this one? And now we're gonna one? do that one. No, so now the one you have it? is the one we haven't. That one's not. And that one's like on order now. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that one will be new, but this yeah. one I used it and then, um, it was so good. I used it at balloon, at balloon university and I was so happy I had it and it was great. And what I, then I did the customization cause I love everything custom, but I did the customization because I know one of the biggest complaints people have is somebody took my scissors. Somebody took That's my it. scissors. <laughs> so I'm like, well, if you customize it, nobody can take your scissors and it's on a key ring. So like, you can't, you can't take it. Like you just can't That's take so it. Funny. No, so totally. try to think as much as possible of everything, but yeah. So, the, oh, and then the other thing we did was, I don't think anybody ever noticed this in the other aprons, but I did. And it was driving me crazy. Um, mm -hmm. this piece, this piece on the apron and the other one, because the pockets are, are, are nice and large. It would be, it would bulge a little bit. So I made, I had them like manufacture it to the work. I'm like, I need you to pull it and stitch it all the way across. So, <laughs> and 
And now they're all like this, and now they're perfect and flat, and they make me happy. So then the um the other thing we did was the pockets at the bottom, like the three pockets from the bottom were lower. So what we did was we brought these up. So that way the fishing line oh. was a little bit more secure because I experienced one time that my fishing line popped there. out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So with this deeper, it um it's like it's more secure in there, like the fishing line or whatever you put in there. And then the material is like slightly lighter. And it's just so that it's a little bit less um heavy. But I know it doesn't, it's literally an ounce, but it was a big deal to me, so. <laughs> well, you can clearly tell that you like really like this. And I know you like it because we text all the time, but like the actual product development, see, I think I would get very exhausted. Like I would just be like, whatever, it's good enough. Or if I needed another sample or another design, I would just be like, I just don't really care that much. I'm like going to give up. <laughs> no, so but I, you really I love it. it. I really do love it. I do love it. And I really do love, um, I, ever since I was small, like I love to find solutions. Like that's one of the things I enjoy the most. Like my favorite part of designing is the design process. It's not even the outcome. Like the, the mm. execution is not even my favorite part. My favorite part is the design process. It's like figuring out the solution, like figuring out how to make this work, figuring out the right proportions. Like that's what I love. I've always loved that since I was small. So yeah. I think that I, because of that, I'm like obsessed with, with product design now because I think it's so it's so cool. Like if you can solve somebody's problem or solve an issue for someone and it's like an entire market, why not? Like, and yeah. you know, you can make a business from it. It's great. Meanwhile, you're helping everybody by, by providing a product that is cute. It, you know, it's functional. And then, then you add just like stuff to make it cute. The accessories. Like the I love. Well, and the thing that I've learned too, the, the older I've gotten, the more I've realized, like, I just assumed like if, if this is a problem that I have and other people have, and it's so easily identifiable, surely someone's going to solve it. Like surely a manufacturer is going to solve this or this big company or that big company. And like, that's just not true. Like a lot of times the people that solve the problems are, you know, Lily and her husband or someone else who's working in the trenches. Who's like, there really needs to be a solution. And if, if you don't do it, it doesn't mean someone else is going to. Sometimes there's just like a problem that it's just like, you just have to figure it out and there's an opportunity there. I also think that what ends up happening is, um, in my opinion, is when it becomes a manufacturer, like when it's a bigger company, I don't think they're specifically looking at, I think they're not specifically looking at those specific needs. They're kind of just gauging it based off of a surface level and then they'll just make the product the best they can and if it works and nobody has really said anything then they're not going to change anything on it yeah. versus if you're actively trying to make the product better and you're asking and i remember dming people that i would recognize from the orders that we got and i would be like i would love to know your feedback when, once you've used it for like two months please tell me your feedback i want to know your feedback i want to and i was like almost like harassing people because <laughs> i really <laughs> wanted to like know what what i could do better so i think that when it's like at a small scale like that like what we're doing um i, I guess it would be more like a boutique style business mm -hmm. then i think that those needs are a little bit easier to meet because we're more involved and i'm in the trenches like you said like when i'm right. going to the conventions this year i'm just like i i want to like figure out what it is that they're doing like, what are they using how are they doing this like so i was really looking at all that stuff when i've been going to the conventions this year and that helps me with like the product development very and cool. not all yeah, of them make it so before i don't want to end quite yet i do want to talk about um charm loon so let's talk about that's like a whole other i mean still the same concepts you design the process you went through many prototypes but um less of a less of an apparel tool and more of a decorative piece so yeah. let's talk about those like how how did that come about um what was different about that process so charm loons started just like blue mosaics by mistake so um the because i create content you know i'm always thinking like how can we how can i help the industry um have something else to offer their client like how do i help the industry do something cool how do i take a distortion technique and make it simple where like i if i always tell people like i literally use the one exact same distortion technique and I make a million things because mm -hmm. I just kind of like look at that and I, I want to make it um easier even though it doesn't look easy but I, I promise it is but um <laughs> so what I did was I 
don't like that vinyl. I hate that the vinyl doesn't go perfectly um, flat on balloons. That drives me crazy. So I was just like, man, like how cool would it be to, and I don't, I hate getting on my cricket. I hate doing all of that. Like I, I, it's so, I know it's interesting because some people are like, well, you do mosaics. And I'm like, yeah, but I don't care. I love that. That's easy. But getting yeah. on the cricket, turning it on, getting on the computer, that drives me no, crazy. I agree. I don't like it either. I, it drives me crazy. It takes a lot of time. I kind of it's, burnt out at first. I was like, this is amazing. Everything should be customized. And now if there's like a cricket, I'm just like, Ugh, I hate and it. And I love. And I, they look so beautiful, but then what I feel like happens is, and I know like, it doesn't matter because you're just using it for that one day. And then if it's extra, it stays a few days extra, then that's just a plus. I know it's not a big deal, right. but I know like when it starts to deflate, like it starts to crinkle or whatever. So I love that they're, they look so beautiful like that, but I was like, well, what if there was like a way where, oh, and then when the balloon bars were popping up, I'm mm -hmm. like, what if there was a way that it was like faster to customize and you didn't have to like, if somebody came in and they wanted to do like happy birthday or, or you just had a foil or you didn't have time to do a vinyl, but you already had a pre printed three foot balloon. Like how could you customize it? So I was making, I was playing around to do a con content for Valentine's day in 2019, 21, no, 2020. Yeah. It was 2020. And I was like, Oh, how cool would it be if like, you had, I had seen a graphic that I was for this charity and it was a balloon that was like a heart. And it said, we, my husband designed it and it said hope, right? And I thought, oh man, this would be cool. And he redesigned it to say the, the, the charity's name. And I'm like, what if I could do that in real life? Like, what if I could do that? So I started playing with polymer clay and I started using with like one of those, um, I don't know what the extruders. And I took the oh, extruder, yeah. I put the polymer clay in it and I'm like, well, and then I drew the name Alyssa because she's like my prototype for everything. I drew the name Alyssa and then I just placed the polymer um, rope on top of it and I drew and I did it all and then I baked it. And I put like little holes at the ends and I'm like, let's see if this works because I knew that once it dried, it would be light enough that it wouldn't weigh the balloon down. Mm -hmm. So I did it and I attached it. I took a picture and I was like, oh, this is so cute. But then of course I was like, who the heck is going to sit here? If everybody complains about balloon mosaics, they're going to complain about now having to get polymer clay and having to do the extruder. And so I'm already like so burnt with the balloon mosaic thing that every time I see somebody, I'm like, just, I know if you don't like it, don't do it. Stop <laughs> complaining. If you don't like them, don't do them. Just stop complaining. So that I could just hear everybody complaining about the, oh my gosh, now I have to get extruded. So I didn't even post it actually in 2020. I was nice. just like, I'm not going to post this because Anthony was like, this is really cool. He's like, but well, that's okay. Pause. Because that was going to be my other question. Do you ever come up with something that you were going to post, but you're like, actually, this might be something. So I'm yeah. not going to post it because as soon as you put it out there, yeah. you just, yeah. There's yeah. a ton of things that I, I, I'll make and I'm like, Oh wait, I'm like, hold on a second. And then I just kind of like, I'm like backtrack and I won't post it. Yeah. Um, so then I was like, okay, maybe we can make this with an Anthony. Cause he has more of like that, um, mentality of like, how do we produce this quick? I'm more of like, this is so beautiful. I don't care if it took me 40 hours, but that's not the reality of most balloon businesses. You guys have like, we have to go quick. Like as you know, it's profit at the end nice. of the day, like it's a business. So he was like, how, how about if we figure out how to make this and people can just customize them. And I was like, all right, let's do it. So I think we went through. And I feel like I change this number every day, but I want to say it was between eight to 12 versions of Charm Loons because there were so many factors that were involved because when something's pretty, it's pretty. But then when you're going to sell it and then now with like the experience I've had in the balloon industry and I know how most balloon artists work, I'm like, wait a minute, it needs to be something that is quick. It's something that's an add-on. It's something that, that they don't have to learn brand new. That's going to take like a new set of skills. So I'm like, right. what do we do? How do we, how do we fix this? Like, how do we do this? So we went through a whole bunch of um, variations of it. And then we figured that the easiest way, I knew that everybody was going to love the script because it just looked like it was part of, you know, like the string of the balloon. So that was the original idea. But I knew that that wasn't realistic because if your client called you on a Wednesday and you needed it Saturday, how were you going to get it? Like that didn't make sense yeah. because there was no way to do the script 
linked. There's no way to do that. And it just wouldn't, it wouldn't be strong enough. So then we started, we thought, well, why don't we do a vertical? And we just do like a chunky font that you can see. Cause that was another thing too. I was like, I want to, I want people to be able to see it. Like if it's skin, like you're not going to see it. Right, so we, right. start, we started going through that. And then there's the fact of like gravity balance wind there were so many factors so we tested and tested i would leave them like i would leave three foot balloons outside in my backyard testing all the different ones because i wanted to make sure it wouldn't snap it wouldn't you know there were so many things and then it was the material because then it was like how do yeah. you do the material it has to be light enough how what kind of balloon is this going to work on like it, it's just you know it's a lot of testing and it took almost two years yeah almost two years to finally mm -hmm. be able to get it out and then in in flow at flow uh, at the beginning of this year we had samples and we were showing everybody and everybody's like this is really cool oh my gosh they're like if i can buy the whole alphabet and i can just put them together myself this is an easy way to customize something and i was like yes that's exactly what my mentality was right and then yeah. of course you know i've always wanted to have my own balloon line so i'm like and if i designed three foot balloons that were beautiful that just said like happy birthday real pretty then you just have to add the name done yeah back to school done like it would be so much faster so that's where like that all developed was because i knew that the trend of the customizations was so um popular so i thought how can i make that process for everybody faster and they don't have yeah. to customize every single balloon with the cricket and you know changing the font and changing the color of the vinyl and, like this might be an easy way to do it so um we ended up changing the material from what we showed at float we ended up changing it and then because it was more durable the new one and we were like okay that's it and then at some point too you can i'm a perfectionist but at some point you have to let go and you just got to put yeah. it out on the market because if you don't put it on the market then you can't perfect it well, it's always gonna be the rain you announced it early like you were like tomorrow we're announcing charm loons and like you didn't even have all the details figured out yet and i remember being like really like i i but again at some point you just have to like Put it out there. Well, that's uh, um, at Flow, the day, since we were vendors this year and it was like this whole new experience, I the day before the vendor showcase opened, I told Anthony, no, forget it. I don't want to I don't want to take the samples downstairs. I'm like, I'm like, forget it. Let's just not do it. And he was like, what are you talking about? I'm like, nope, I don't want to do it. I'm like, we're just going to sell the bag, sell the apron. We'll tell people it'll ship. We'll sell all the little accessories that we had, the apparel. I'm like, forget it. I'm not doing it. And he was like, no, I'm like, no, I'm like, it's not perfect. He was like, you need to put it out there. He's like, this is the perfect place where you're going to get the best feedback, whether it's negative right. or positive, whether this is even going to work. And I'm like, nope, nope. And he was like, yes, we're going to do it. And I'm like, oh my gosh, okay, fine. And then we went back and forth and I was just like, fine, let's just do it. And we put it yeah. out there. And I even remember kind of being like, like I would kind of keep it in the back and like if only somebody oh, asked. I feel like it was like hidden. Yeah, because I was kind of like, mm, yeah, whatever. And I was just kind of trying to ignore it. Oh. And Anthony would be like, so did you see the new charm? And I'd be like, oh. <laughs> but I'm glad he did that. Like I'm glad he's always the one that pushes me to, to like not, you know, just get things out there. Because then, right. then, you know, ideas are everybody has ideas, right? And I'm sure there's how many times do you have the same idea as somebody else? So right. he was like, we just need to put it out there because like, what are you going to do? And then I was like, fine. And then after we did that, we came back and we had announced that flow that we were going to have them for spring 2020 because we were convinced that it was ready to go. But then we started having manufacturing issues and mm. we were like, Oh man, this isn't going to work. Then we started getting backed up. So we were like, forget it. Let's just buy the machine. And we were like, fine, we'll just, We'll make it them ourselves until we figure this out because yeah. i also didn't want to keep like you know i didn't want to be the person that said we're launching in two months and then we're like oh no just kidding and another two months oh no just kidding and i didn't want to do that so yeah we we're just like forget it let's just do it ourselves we'll figure it out um and basically we launched july 20th and it's done really well and it's interesting because and then we started actually wholesaling which is also new for us yeah started wholesaling to balloon artists and um we have like you know we have we have some accounts already and we're still figuring out those kinks my biggest thing is production i like to be i like i want to be like amazon i want to be as fast as possible but you know that's not the reality we are a small small business and it is a handmade item so yeah we're working out those kinks and it's it's going well but you know 
we're changing things also as we go. Well, and also too, I hope I'm not sharing too much of your, your personal life, but like this machine is in your house and you are assembling these like in my house, in like, in my, what, your living room. Like, living room. So I, I feel like there are a lot of people that think like in order to do something like this, you need a warehouse and you need 10 employees and you need like, no, you, d- you just need to start, you know, like no. I'm still out of my house. I have a studio attached to my house, which feels like a big upgrade, but like you and I are both advocates of running things really lean. Really lean. Absolutely. Mm. You have to make that next step, which I think you're getting ready to, right? Yes. Yes. Because we, I'm a, I was, um, I've done content for such a long time and our product was so digital. There wasn't a need for me to be in a studio because the f- pictures I was photographing came down right away. So like, I didn't need to have an, like, I didn't need to have that overhead. There was no need to do that. I'd rather right. take that overhead and go on vacation and take my kids to Disney every six weeks. Like that's what I looked at it as, you know? So we were, we've always, and my husband too, he's like, we're like, keep it as lean as possible, like as lean as we can. But I didn't want to get into a studio without knowing if these products were going to work. Right. So we were like, let's get a few versions out there. Let's see what's happening. Let's do this. this and that. But now we're both on the same page where we're like, okay, I think it's time. <laughs> and now we're yeah. just going to, we're just going to do it because it just doesn't make sense anymore. Yeah. There it is this, it, and I'm not an expert in this or anything, but there is this, like this point where like you're being too lean and you're actually preventing yourself from growing. Like, growing. Like, I was able to run my business out of my basement and then we moved homes and now I have a studio attached. But like my friend Jamie, who actually we're going to record an episode soon, she has like two middle school boys and doesn't have extra space. She's just like, I'm either going to make my life hell or I need to invest in a rental, a studio. And, you know, so it's not like I'm saying never spend money, but like you have, you wait to that point where like, you know, you need to. Right. And that's what's happening to us, um, I, I'm, I'm always very open about this because I don't like to pretend that, I mean, I'm not going to pretend that I'm, I am who I'm not. And I'm proud to say that I run a lean business from my house and we get to keep all that profit. So I'm happy. I'm, I've always been very like, yeah, I run it from my house. I'm super happy. This beautiful wall is in my garage, guys. Like I, I'm always like, you know, I'm pretty big. I don't care about that. Um, but as everybody knows, my photo room was my daughter's room, but she sleeps with us because she always comes into our bed. So they were sharing a bedroom. So we we're like, she doesn't need a room. Forget him. Like, let's just keep using it as a picture room. But now my son is in middle school. He just started middle school and she's in fourth grade. So now, and it's different. So now they, I knew they needed their own space because they were at each other's throats. So <laughs> even for, like, for like homework and all these things. So I was like, okay, I think it's time. We have to separate them. And now that we separated them, we I was like, well, now it's like it's the biggest hassle to get a picture is I can't even explain what happens now because before I just had my room. So I just kind of shove my stuff over, take my picture, have my beautiful lighting. It was ready to go. It was done. Now it's like a right. production to do that. So now we're like, forget it. We're like, this. it's time that, like you said, now it's like making our life miserable because we're trying to keep lean. So now we're just going to do it. And I know it'll, it'll yeah. grow our business. And now I think we're going to make the, the step of actually hiring employees. Ooh, because that's need, exciting too. Yeah, I need somebody to just keep like my head on because I'm just like all over the place. That's so funny because just today, like literally, literally, I just checked my phone because before we started recording, I was like, you know what? I don't know why I'm scared of hiring someone. So I just messaged this girl who like, I don't even really know, but she works at our favorite coffee shop and she's like, just so good. Like, do you know, you, you, you see, you know, they're good. Yeah. That girl is so good at her job. She's so good to talk to people. She's so, so I just sent her a message, like asking if she wants any part-time work. So, uh, well, I'll let you know how that goes, but I might have accidentally just hired my first employee as well. Um, yes. The thing is that like, um, and it's, um, what's that book called again? Chillpreneur. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Chillpreneur when I, I love that book. So when I, when I heard that book, I mean, it's obvious, everybody tells you this, but it like took that time to finally listen to it when it was, she was like, focus on your create your area of genius. And I was like, well, my area of genius is coming up with ideas, photographing them, making stuff really pretty. I don't need to keep track whether I have enough labels or not for packaging. Like, I don't need to keep track of that. And neither right. does my husband. Like, he doesn't need to keep track of that. So I, that's where we're at now that we're just like, we need somebody to just help us like operate properly, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Or like, you don't need to keep 
printing shipping labels or exactly you know, i don't need to be at this point now especially now with this launch i was like I don't need to be doing this because I could have been creating Halloween content, but I've been spending two days just getting orders out and shipping this. Like, I don't mm -hmm. need this. I could have made two tutorial videos in two days for Halloween. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Well, and also speaking of Halloween, congratulations on your well, publication. Thank you. So exciting. What do you call, what do you call that? Pub you it's were published. I, I guess like a feature. I don't know. Feature. Well, it was quite a feature. Um, Better Homes and Garden Magazine. You had like a two-page, three-page spread. Yeah, that was a two-page spread. I couldn't believe it. I still haven't gotten one. I feel like Wisconsin is just like slow. I look everywhere. I want one to hold in my hand to be like, I know I this know. lady. But congratulations. That is so exciting. It was. And it was really exciting. Can I ask like how that how that happened? Did they reach out to you? Yeah. So the editor from the magazine reached out to me. She I guess she had been following me on Instagram, I think, or she had seen my stuff. And she messaged me. And, uh, I want to say it was like in March, maybe April, like maybe February. I think it was towards the like beginning of the year. Did you like wet and, your pants? I would have been no, like. No, <laughs> because I was like, this is such a lie. I'm like, this is not her. I was like, whatever. <laughs> So I, but then I looked it up and I was like, wait, no, this lady is for real. So That's then amazing. she was like, we'd like to do, we love these pictures. And she sent me a list of pictures and she's like, we love this picture, this picture, this picture, this picture. So then I had to send, but I never knew, I didn't know if they were using all of them. I thought yeah. they were just like gathering pictures of like what they were going to use or whatever. Well, it could have been like a little thumbnail or, or something. I was positive that I was going to be like in a bottom corner that just said like, and make a popcorn costume out of balloons. Like I was, you know how like they always have like that collaborative, like where it's like a lot of yeah, people. Yeah. That's what I thought it was going to be. And then three days before, no, but then they asked me questions too. But because you don't have, um, you don't have um, like editing um, authority over that. Like you don't know what they're going to do. So I knew that they had right. asked me questions. They had, she, another girl had messaged me. She's like, oh, based off of what I found online, is this accurate? Is this whatever? So, but I was like, I don't know what's going to happen. So three days before the magazine came out, she emailed me the digitals. And I was like, holy I was like, <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. And I hadn't really been like super excited about it yeah. until then. Cause I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. This is like, oh my God. I'm like, this is like real. Like, this is like that stuff that happens to people that they get featured in these magazines. Are you going to frame it? I would frame it. Like I'm going to frame it. Yeah. Um, I'm, Cause I've, I've had other features before, like small ones. And um, it kind of felt like, <sighs> I tend to be very like, what's next? I, mm -hmm. I tend to be very like, what's next? What's next? What's next? What's next? What's next? And I was like, well, this is a big deal. Cause it was kind of cool when like I opened the magazine, I even got emotional. Cause I was like, oh my God, like I did all these things and, and they're not all from the same year. Like some of those pictures are from three or four years ago. And yeah. I'm like, this is crazy to see. Like, you don't even realize how long it's been that you've been doing all this work because you're just moving. I'm moving on to the next season. So it was really cool to see. So my husband's like, we have to frame this. We have to frame the yeah. full feature. We bought an extra magazine for my daughter. So that when she gets older, she can like, you know, we can give it to her and she can like get all excited well, about she's it. She's featured in it. And she's, I mean, she's a lot younger then, isn't she? She was, she was, I think that picture was during the pandemic. So it was in 2020. She was little. Yeah. She was little. She was like six oh. or seven. Well, congratulations. I, I can't wait to get my copy, but it's, it's just, yeah, it must be surreal. Like it's such a mainstream magazine that you can like, well, in theory, walk into the store and buy, but none of my dumb stores have it yet. But eventually. Well, we had a hard time finding it too. It's early. It's early. early. It's early. That's what it was. That's what it was. Yeah. Because we well, went to for it the day it came out. And then I was like, nobody has it. <laughs> I know. But like, excuse me, where's my magazine? And it was a Friday. So we were like, well, it's probably a Friday. Like the magazine, because there's like separate companies that go into the stores and physically put these magazines in. Sure. So I'm like, oh, you know what? They probably are like Friday. The guy's like, I'm not going to go put it in. So he's probably putting it in the next week. So I'm like... I went to Target with Zach and we were both like cracking up at the magazines they did have, but not yours. <laughs> it was like low carb freedom magazine. I was like, what is this? 
magazines. Low carb. Yeah. Oh my God, that's so funny. Low carb freedom. I like, magazines. I like took a picture. It was like fishing daily. I was like, what are these ridiculous magazines? <laughs> like, where's Better Homes and Garden? Like, I'm not looking for that. Yeah, I don't know. But it was the Halloween. Though, but yeah. Very cool. Well, well congratulations cool. on everything. Um, we'll obviously link to your shop so people can get. Are there aprons left? Can can people even buy anything? Yeah, there's still aprons left. Yeah, there's still. We oh, we wow. bought a, we bought a lot this time. We bought more. We bought double the amount that we bought last time. Well, good. Well, I'm excited. And then, um, is this? I don't know. Can I say where you're going to be next? Or is that a secret still? Well, I hope I get my confirmation today. So by then, it, actually, I'll be there by then. Oh, okay. Well, uh, if I cut this part out, then, but if I didn't, you're going to GloboCon. So yes, that's exciting. <laughs> that is exciting. I'm excited. I'm really excited about that, actually. I don't know why I'm suddenly so excited. About it. No, it's going to be a good time. It's going to be fun. Well, I am so excited for all your success. It is so well-deserved. Um, and thank you, thank you for from someone who consumes and uses your product. Thank you. Um, because... It was much needed. The bag, the aprons, the the accessories. I'm I'm very excited to use all of it. And I would love, thank you so much for having me on again. I really appreciate it. And I would love to take this chance to say that I love feedback and I love any ideas. I'm here, like I am I am a balloon artist. I am part of this community and I want us to like look really cute and have functional stuff. So I'm <laughs> always like open to ideas, you know, like I, I really love it. So Please what's, DM what's the best way if someone actually has some feedback like instagram or like what instagram. How should they like, get for things like that instagram because i actually check my instagram dms and when i check my email okay cool but i shouldn't well but. the creative heart studio we probably all follow you anyway but um yeah. thank you so much for your well, thank you Sarah. appearance, appearance uh, third time's a charm yeah, i know wow that's so cool <laughs> thanks Thanks for joining me in this week's episode. As usual, I tried to keep it bright and light in a few minutes or less. If you wish there were more episodes, you are in luck. You can join us in our Patreon group for our monthly book club. I record weekly episodes guiding you through a different self-development book each month. For as little as $3 a month, you can join more than 50 other balloon business owners in our private group. Click the link in the show notes to join us.